you have husbands that feel neglected, you have uh, uh, wives that don't feel loved because you're diverting to the children and that's actually setting your children up to fail. Because if your children don't understand the commitment that is marriage, you are setting them up fundamentally to fail for the rest of their lives. And, 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 and because you can get your kids in sports and you'd be like, no, you're gonna finish this sport because you committed, but then you divorce your spouse. And you're teaching them that, well, you know, there are some things you can give up yeah. on. And, but no, no, there's not. If you commit to marriage and you commit to showing your children the truth about marriage, daddy made a mistake. I shouldn't have said that. Dads, don't be afraid to tell your kids that you messed up, period, the end. Because you're not perfect and just because you're the dad doesn't mean that you're right all the time, all right? All right, guys, Alec Lace, live here at Turning Point USA, joined by first class father, Graham Allen. <laughs> Th thank you that. for giving me a few minutes of your time absolutely, here. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's kick it off like this. How many kids do you have? How old? I have three children, uh, 10, 9, and 7. Uh, my 7-year-old turns 8 in September, so I'm fixing to have a 10, 9, 8, and then they change again uh, after that. So. Very cool. Are you having any more? You all done here? No, no, we're done. We're done. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've actually talked about you know, maybe adopting one day and things like that. Um, but uh, it, it's been very important for us with all the craziness that goes on and traveling and everything to, to really try to focus and include our kids in, in what it is that I do and, and things like that. So it's really cool because they're getting at the age now that we can take them places and that they can, you know, explore and, you know, now that the lockdowns and everything are done. And uh, so, so we're really excited uh, for them to learn about this country, about about the principles that we actually believe, and you know, uh, it, it's one thing for mommy and daddy to say uh, these things and that we believe these things in this house. It's another thing to go, no, you know, we're Allens, and this is what we believe, and you know, God first, uh, mommy and daddy, and then you know, you guys. I think it's very important to teach our children all those values and, and how that works and uh, what it means to actually stand up for what you believe in. Um, today's day and age, I, I believe that we are, we're not teaching our children real life, if that makes sense. Uh, we're, we're, we're teaching them values, but they're paper thin values. And you know, we're, we're teaching them that, you know, yes, we love the Lord. Yes, we do this, yes, we do that. But we don't teach them what happens when you meet resistance on those things. That's when you find out what you really believe and what you really stand for is when people might not like you for it or people might hate you for it in some regards and so so we're really trying to focus on that these days um, that that we want our family and I especially want my children to be prepared for the world and, and, and you know the Bible even tells us that you know if you believe the Bible if you believe in God it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows for you out there and you know we romanticize these things a lot and I think it's the responsibility of parents to show our children that you know marriage is actually it's a lot of hard work man and and you know mommy and daddy don't always like each other all the time and and, and those are the important things instead of hiding those things from the kids and so uh, I don't know I don't know how I got off of that tangent but it's just very important to me I, I believe that as parents we're setting our children up to fail because we're not showing them the reality we're showing them the highlight rules um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not advocating, you know, fighting or arguing in front of, you know, your children. I think that you should work on your relationship where you don't fight, you have uh, disagreements. But to make it seem like marriage is perfect and you love each other all the time and, you know, butterflies are around the room all the time, that's not real. It's not real and we're not teaching our children. That's why our divorce rates are so high. That's why uh, absentee fathers are becoming just rampant within our country because they're not taught what to do when it actually gets hard. And, and, and we have a responsibility as fathers especially. It's been proven, my wife's a social worker. It's been proven in every DSM-5 book, every psychology book that you can possibly imagine that the father is for the long term of a human's life, boy and girl, as they become women and men, it's the father that dictates how they turn out or, 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 or what issues they have or how they become. 
The father shows the boys how to become men. The father shows the girls as women what to look for in a man. I mean, it is it is without a doubt that the father is such a vital figure in our children's lives. And, and, and I believe that it's our obligation to, t to teach them the truth, the reality uh, of how life actually is. Yeah, very well said, Graham. I talk about the fatherless crisis all the time on my podcast here. And I speak to a lot of da dads that are dads now that grew up without a father yep. and, and their moms, that single moms are doing miracles out there, but they Absolutely. can't teach their kid boys how to be men. Yep. So they're gonna find that father figure somewhere, better than they find it. I mean, some of the guys in the military, some true coaches, Correct. others find it in the street and it leads to terrible results. Absolutely. Uh, but, but just like you, my oldest is 15. I have four kids myself and it's uh, and you gotta be able to equip them with the tools to debate the issues of the day. Correct. And it's so important. And, and just we're all trying to navigate these waters here. So uh, let me bring it back to the beginning. About how old were you then when you first became a father? And how did that kind of change your perspective? On I was 23 when I first became a father. I, uh, you know, I come from the South, and, and we move a little faster on the kid train in the South than a lot of uh, other states do. Uh, in fact, in the South, if you're 30 and you don't have a kid, people start to ask, "What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, why, why, why haven't you gotten married and have a kid yet?" Um, and so, you know, we, 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 we had struggles. Uh, we got married, me and my wife have been married almost 13 years now. We got married super quick, had children super quick, um, and we were, we were young ourselves. We were 22 when we got married. And, you know, around year five to seven, you know, you start to realize, oh crap, you know, this is, this is it. Like this is, you know, this is life. This is who my, who my spouse is. This is, this is all it's gonna, you know, and things. And, um, you know, I write about this in my first book, America 316, where I talk about, you know, I almost lost my family because I came from a broken home, uh, very much like you just said. I, I ended up being raised in my teenage years by my grandparents. Um, and I didn't know what to do when things got hard, you know. Um, I have been married longer than all of my dad's marriages put together. And, and, and so I, I just, I didn't know. I, I didn't know what to do in those regards. And so one of the biggest things, <clears throat> this is why I harp on the reality. <clears throat> we have an obligation to teach our children what is commanded of us by God, our commitment to our spouses. Love is, uh, love is whatever. Saying I love you really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Because a lot of people say they love you right before they stab you in the back. That's the truth. I choose you is such a much bigger phrase and a much bigger word to me. And that's what I'm trying to teach my children is, you know, love is something that goes up and down, up and down. You know, uh, love is right up there with like. Sometimes I don't like you very much today, you know, yeah, but, but, but choosing your family, choosing your spouse, choosing to stand up for what you believe in, even when it's going to be hard, that's what makes a real man and a real woman in the real world, is that. And, and as fathers, that is our job. Our job is to provide, to protect, and I believe in that protect is teaching them the truth. Because if you set them up for failure when they leave your house, you're, you're not protecting your children. And, and I do, I believe that that's, that's a place that we're failing. I believe that this generation could break the nationwide cycle that we see of fatherless homes where dads see them once every two weeks on the weekend or don't see them at all because they're either in prison or just don't care. Um, this generation has the ability to change the course of so many future generations if we just stand up as fathers and from your lips to God's ears here on that one. But I'll tell you what, just like you're saying here, I mean, we're at Turning Point USA, we got a lot of young guys yep. here. And just like you said, uh, these kids are gonna go and they're gonna study for years on to be whatever profession they want, doctor, lawyer, teacher. Yep. But there is no studying to be a husband. There's nope. no studying to be a father. There's no class, right? there, there's for, no that, class yeah. for it. And if you don't have a marriage, I'm married 16 years myself, and if you don't have a marriage plan, if you don't have a parenting plan, you're doomed to fail. Yep. It's something that you need to work on. You gotta work on those plans. And I think that that's something too that leads to the high divorce rate. And yep. I, I still think we have this culture that sees like, you're gonna have the bachelor party. And oh, it's your last night of freedom before yeah, the ball and yeah, chain. Yeah. We look at it in such a negative way. And that, that's why I do this. I bring out a lot of these guys that have just smoked it in life. And it's like, hey, you know what? Yeah, I did this and did that. But being a father has given me the most sense of fulfillment. It's the most you're gonna get. But the young kids, they're getting told that it's something to avoid, not something to embrace. You can, accomplish so many things 
You know, I've been blessed in my life to be where we are now. Never would have imagined that we would have um, <clears throat> accomplished the things in life that we have. None of that would have happened without God, first of all. But if you took every single bit of it away today, my family is the most important thing. And even I, I know that's a really cliche thing, even I have to remind myself of that sometimes. Because I get bogged down in the weeds just like everybody else. Oh, we got a book coming out. We got to make this many sales. Oh, we got to, you know, I've got an apparel company. Oh, well, you know, we're, we're behind on sales this month. I'm in a congressional race now. If I lose, the entire world is going to see that I lost, you know. And I get bogged down in that. And, 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 and I have to go back to the most basic principle that fuels us as a human species that we're not supposed to be alone. You know, the Bible teaches us that first and foremost. And our family is all that we got, man. I mean, it really, really, really is. And it is, it is, I am setting a precedence, hopefully, that my children will follow. And, and, and like I said, like you said, a family plan, it goes hand in hand. We're saying the same things. The family plan is we have to stop romanticizing things for our children. You have to teach your children the reality. Fathers out there, uh, your kids are not more important than your spouse. The Bible tells us that. Point blank, it's God, your spouse, your kids. And, 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 and we make a very, very valid point to show our children, you know, we love you, but it's on a different spectrum of love, obviously, with your spouse as opposed to your kids. And me and your mama are the team. And you're not going to separate the team, you know. <laughs> There's not going to be, you know, going and ask mama something and then she says no and then you have, no, 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 no. We are a team. You may not always like what the team has to say. It's like the military. You may not always like what we tell you to do, but you're going to do it. And then you can come back and talk to us about, well, why, why you thought that that was there. They need to learn that because that leads to divorce rates. That a lot of parents these days have their children and then they push their spouse into the secondary position over their kids. That is not the way it's supposed to be. That is not biblical. And that's what leads to all these divorce races or, or, or rates uh, and these divorce cases. That's why I said divorce races, divorce cases. Uh, because you have, you have husbands that feel neglected. You have uh, uh, wives that don't feel loved because you're diverting to the children. And that's actually setting your children up to fail. Because if your children don't understand the commitment that is marriage, you are setting them up fundamentally to fail for the rest of their lives. And 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 because you can get your kids in sports and you'd be like, no, you're gonna finish this sport because you committed, but then you divorce your spouse. And you're teaching them that, well, you know, there are some things you can give up yeah. on. And but no, no, there's not. If you commit to marriage and you commit to showing your children the truth about marriage. Daddy made a mistake. I shouldn't have said that. Dads, don't be afraid to tell your kids that you messed up. Period. The end. Because you're not perfect. And just because you're the dad doesn't mean that you're right all the time. All right? I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten on my knee to be able to look my children in the eye, meet them on their level, and say, Daddy was wrong there. I shouldn't have done that. You know? Will you forgive me? Asking your children to forgive you. You're, you're teaching them that... You're teaching them humility. You're teaching them, honestly, you're teaching them grace, which we, we all need. Every one of us, none of us deserve grace, but we all need it. And, and, and it is so valuable to, you know, the days of, well, you're doing this because I said so. There is a place for that. Don't get me wrong. There, there definitely is a place for that. That's called a job. Uh, but, but teaching your children that life isn't perfect, marriage isn't perfect, and you're not perfect, I truly believe that that sets them up to be actual, strong, grounded men and women in their lives because they see the reality. And then when they're hit with the reality, they're prepared for it. Oh, okay, I saw mom and dad go through this all the time. You know, no, I'm not giving up on this. You know, 
that's just what I believe. And I agree with you there. And I think already so far in my life, I've blown away the amount of times my father said, I'm sorry, or said that I love you. I think those are two things that have changed in fathers today that wasn't so present years ago. Absolutely. But I think also what you say there too about telling your kids, letting them know that you love them. There's also times I feel that I'll use love and hate in the same sentence because I want them to know there's things that I hate. Yeah. Like I, say, I hate this behavior, right. but I, I love you. I love you, but I hate the decisions you're making yep. here. You know, Absolutely. I love you, but I hate these choices. You know, Absolutely. I think they need to know that as well. So I wanted to ask you about the, the discipline portion of this what type of discipline are you as a dad and is that different than the discipline style you grew up with? uh well i mean you know i grew up like i said i grew up in a in a not good environment uh and so what you know I, I, you can't compare what i grew up in because no what i grew up in was absolutely not the way that it should be uh i i believe that every discipline uh, especially as your children get older i believe it changes with each child each child is different same thing with the military some people hated to be uh, smoked like physically. Some people hated that because they weren't as physically adapted as others. Some people didn't care. I'll do push-ups all day. It doesn't bother me. Kids are that way. I've got one son. You know, you could, you could, you could. I mean, he's getting kind of too old for spanking at this point anyway. But you can spank him all day, and he'll just look at you. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't bother. In fact, he would rather do that right. than to uh, have to mow the yard. Because, <clears throat> because to him, that's super quick. It's over really quick, and he's going about his day. I Doesn't got one work. of them myself. Doesn't work. Uh, my uh, my middle son is the son that I can literally do that, and he <clears throat> doesn't want to disappoint me so much. It just melts him right. And then my daughter, my daughter is uh, is 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 the baby girl for sure. And so she. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, as fathers with your spouse, working with your spouse to realize, I have a bias towards my daughter. She's, you know, she's my little girl, and and, and I am not. I have a bias towards her because she's my little girl. So I kind of let, I kind of, you know, me and my wife will talk about it, but I kind of let her lead the discipline stuff when it comes to my daughter. And then she's the same way with the boys. She has a, she has a soft spot for the boys, and I'm, you know, with the boys. And so, you know. We talk about what we, what we think the punishment. Here's what we do: when our kids do something, we're like, "That's it, that's it. You're getting punished." Uh, me and your mother are going to talk, and then once we figure out what your punishment is, we're going to let you know. And so that's another thing that we do: don't act immediately. That's something that I've had to learn. And I grew up in the era that you know, my grandfather, rest his soul, you know, he passed away about a year ago, uh, and he is the greatest you know father figure in my life. But he raised me like it was 1930 cow like super quick and ask questions later right don't don't do that you know uh, don't discipline in anger that that's what I've learned I, I am NOT a no spanking person absolutely you should there are times you know where, where that works but not in anger you know you, you have to learn to calm yourself what did they actually do you know in the you know not not how bad did it piss you off what did they actually do and, and, and you talk to your spouse and you figure out what's going on. And so that's kind of the approach that we take. Our kids are at the age now that not being able to watch Ninja Turtles on TV is a much bigger punishment than, you know, th than to spank them. And so it evolves. It evolves as your kids get older. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes I'll find myself in the middle of like one of these big Marcus Aurelius lectures and I'm hitting with philosophy and then I have to remind myself what I'm talking to and then sometimes I'll go off on a you tangent. You lost them five and minutes I lost ago. Them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same thing. Now you mentioned there too, obviously running for Congress here. Now what have been some of the, this had to be a big decision for you to make because yep. I, I know just from interviewing other guys that do this, it takes a toll on the family life. What have been some of the challenges so far you with the campaign and what what finally decided you to make this decision to run uh, well <clears throat> the decision to run was you know we prayed about it a lot of people started talking to us about it um, I even I even was honored enough to be able to sit down with President Trump and talk to him about it before I jumped into the race um, and it was one of those situations of I felt like there was a need I feel like we need new people in Congress and in the Senate and just in politics in general. And we need people that have a voice and an ability to be able to hopefully have other people see it from the other side. And uh, I was fearful of it. I'll be honest with you. It has been every bit as bloody and nasty as you could imagine it to be. But the ultimate decision, prayed with my wife about it. And I just, I just kept having that pull say, you need to put your name in the hat for this. Um, 
And so we talked to our children about it. You know, we said, hey, you know, we, we prayed about this. Um, but, you know, we, as they could understand, we said, you know, we need you to understand that if daddy wins this, I won't be around as much. Um, you know, you would be sending me out to uh, essentially, you know, and hopefully protect you and then protect your children and then your children's children because we got a country to fight for right now. And um, as far as the campaign life, I take a much different approach than much other people that campaign. The campaign is, I'm, I refuse to do everything there is to win. And the reason why is this, because if you have that mindset that you want that seat so bad that you will do everything, you'll neglect your family, you'll neglect your other obligations because while you run for Congress, you actually do have a job that you still have to do. If you neglect your actual duties that you are currently tasked with, then in my opinion, you're in it for the wrong reasons. You just want that seat, you want that power at metaphorically at all costs and you're not the right person in my opinion you know I'm here because God told me to jump I jumped I don't know if that's to win the seat I don't know if it's to lose and then maybe inspire the next person that actually is supposed to be the man or woman that makes the difference I don't know um, but what I do know is I firmly believe that if you're willing to do anything at all costs to win the seat, you are the exact opposite of the person that should be in that seat. And so that's how we approach it. We, we, do, we do the campaign stuff on the schedule when the campaign stuff is on the schedule, and then we block out the family stuff, and then also I have four businesses that I run <laughs> at the same time. And so, uh, you know, making, you know, and my argument would be you'd want somebody in Congress that understands the ability to prioritize and to schedule and, 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 and this and that. And so that's who we are and that's where we that's where we sit. Well listen, I'm, I'm glad that you're running because we need people like you with your voice in there. I know I know it's a sacrifice, but I I, I know I had Sean Parnell on the podcast a few yeah. times before he decided to make yep. this and I know it was something that he prayed about long before he made his decision. But I think I think it was Plato or somebody, I may be wrong, that said that the, the penalty or the cost for not getting involved in the issues yep. is to be ruled by evil men. And Correct. if we don't have guys like you stepping up there, yep. uh, speaking for people like us, that, you know, I think we're, we're, we're going to be ruled by evil men. So I agree. Uh, I, I'm very glad that you're doing it. And thank you for your service, by the way, too. Oh, thank you very and, much. And uh, so I, I'm not going to keep you here. I wanna, last thing I want to hit you with, Graham, I love to ask all the dads that are getting on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, a new dad or about to be father is uh, being a dad is the most rewarding yet most tiring, uh, joyous, strenuous, loving, sometimes hating job that you can ever have and an appointment that you can ever have. I like to call it that. It's an appointment. Your job is to reflect the grace and the understanding that God has given to you um, because at the end of the day I'm a Christian and I truly believe that none of us deserve anything but the worst possible fate imaginable and it's through God's grace which grace is defined as getting something that we do not deserve getting the opposite of what we do deserve right grace is you've done something wrong you deserve a punishment and somebody else takes that punishment for you like that is grace right it is our job to teach our future men and women that, like, like, drive that in. Do not see your little boy or your little girl. They are, they are, very, unfortunately, sooner rather than later, they are going to be men and women in the country and in our society. And you know, your decisions and your choices lead to the legacy that is your family and that is your name. And. Um, it is, it is more powerful and more meaningful than you can ever imagine. Uh, your kids might not always remember every time you were there, but I promise you they'll remember every time that you were. And uh, you know, that was a really big, powerful thing that somebody told me one time when it got hard and I was, you know, our marriage was on the rocks and, and things like that is, you know, you can be there for every single birthday except that one. And they're going to remember that, and, it, and 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 that's a very important thing to remember. Is you're not going to get rewarded as a dad the same way that moms get rewarded on Mother's Day and things like that. But that's not the point. Yeah, the, the the point is to show your kids 
what it means what it means to be a Christian and what it means to be an adult in America and how important it is and how blessed we are to live in the country that we live in. And so uh, that, that, that's that, that's my advice. Well, very well said. And listen, whether or not you get the title of congressman, the title of first class father belongs to you. So thank you for <laughs> giving me a few minutes of your time. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you.